Hey y'all, welcome back to the homestead. Today we are finally putting our EG4 bright mount, solar panel mount in the ground permanently, and then we're gonna wire up the panels. This project's been delayed a little bit, but we're getting to it today, of course, when it's 103 degrees outside. Let's get going. Today we're gonna be using these eight inch sono tubes, and these are going down about three feet into the ground. That's a little bit less concrete than the instructions call for, but I'm okay with that. I understand from my profession that things are usually over-engineered by about 200% for a safety factor. In this case, I've just got four panels in front of my big mount and the uplift on it from any wind is really not gonna be that much. That's because I don't live in a windy area at all. Again, everything is your choice. Now let me show you what I did. This is a 3 8 inch piece of OSB, and that's about the same thickness as the flanges or the feet on the bright mount. And these are the bolts that it comes with, and these are what I'm setting in the concrete. I just drilled a hole in here that is the same size as the bolt. So you can see that I put on our washers for spacing, and that's important. This is fairly tight on here, and it spans over the edges of our sauna tube so that it uh, doesn't sink down into the concrete itself. What I did was I took this over to our bright mount and placed it on the foot and then marked out where the holes were, drilled the holes the same size as the bolts, and there is our jig, essentially. Now I have to clear out the rest of these holes, get our sauna tubes in and pour the concrete for those, and then I will put one of those jigs on the top to hold the bolts. I've dropped our sauna tube in the second hole here and I've got a piece of contractor's line set up. I've got a line level I'm going to put on here and I'm going to align it with our first concrete pile that we already did. I'm gonna mark where this string is and then cut this sauna tube and that will be the top that I want sticking out of the ground. I want these at least six to eight inches above the ground. Again, that's my preference. Instructions say something a little bit different. You make your call. Right on the string, perfect, and is level. All right, let's mix up a little concrete. Okay, we're gonna set our jig here, and ideally you want bolts at least an inch and a half away from the edges. And these eight inch tubes give you that pretty perfect spacing. Make sure your bolts are straight coming out of the bottom. And then we're gonna set them down into our form. Good morning, we're back out here. Our concrete has set up, but not fully cured. If you want it fully cured before you mess with it, you need to wait 28 days. You can actually accelerate the process a little bit by spraying water on the top of the concrete, and that accelerates the chemical process. So when setting your frame on your posts, don't torque down the nuts completely until that curing process is complete, or you're gonna crack your concrete. Now when setting these in place, your braces are adjustable left to right. So you are going to need to make just some slight adjustments to get them onto your piles and onto those bolts on the top of it. And of course, if you're starting from scratch, your cross beams are not gonna be on. You're just going to have these assembled, just put them on. But I already had this assembled for our temporary structure. If you didn't see that video, click on the link at the top of the screen. And then as you go, you're gonna to have to make little adjustments here and there on the feet, on this cross beam here, so that it aligns with your other cross beam on your first one. This one's almost close. I just need to push the foot forward on that one a little bit. Perfect, we'll move our connector into place. We'll be all set. We're all set up and ready for panels. Let me talk for a second about the angle of this and the distance away from the other panels. This is set up at the same azimuth as my main panels, which is 15 degrees past south or 195 degrees. Or if you're coming off east, it's 105 degrees. 
In my original video, I left a diagram about how to calculate for the sun angle so that your front panels do not shade your back panels. I will also include that link below this video. And additionally, you're going to want to cut the grass in between them, so leave enough room for whatever size mower you have. I'm also trenching under the ground here for conduit to run the PB wires to our main array here. And I will run this in series with some panels over here and back to our inverters. And remember, for this array, since it is ungrounded, you are going to need a grounding rod. You are going to need these clips, which scratch into the surface of the panels and to the frame to bond them together. And then you will also need these type of wire clips for the grounding wire to attach to the grounding rod. These panels aren't too hard to put on, but that screeching noise on the aluminum is annoying. When you're setting your panels, make sure your positive and negative conductors are on the correct side if you're going to run them in series or if you're gonna run them in parallel, orient the panel in the proper way. So on this side, I've got the positive conductor and right here is the negative conductor on this panel. So if I need more panels, which is always a great idea. I can add them onto this side and continue to expand forward this way. These EG4 bright mounts are really inexpensive for what they are. And the cool thing is that the newer models, you can adjust the angle. All of our piles are in the ground, our bright mount is mounted, and all of our panels are on. Just the wiring left to do, but I'm gonna do that when it's not 103 degrees outside. See you in a second. Good morning, we're back at it with the wiring. Now, I have to run my conduit through the ground right here, but to keep the weather out of the conduit, at the top, you've probably seen one of these before, this is called a weather head. So that'll sit on the top of my conduit right here so that no rain gets inside where the wires are in that conduit running under the ground to my other array. Obviously, you will need some PV wire. Most PV wire comes with MC4 connectors already on it. You wanna find ones that don't have any on some of the ends because you need to feed them through the conduit and feed them through this weather head. And those connectors won't make it unless you have a really big weather head and fat conduit. That's really not necessary unless you are going to be running a lot of strings through it. Measure your conduit per your project and start putting it together. Now, instead of putting all the conduit together at the same time and then trying to run your wires through it, I'd suggest doing it in sections. However, trying to do it piece by piece is really difficult because then when you're trying to get the glue around your PVC, you're getting it all over the wires as well. So just move section by section and use LB boxes if you need to when you make a bend and then you can pull through that LB box and then feed it through the next new section. And I did that with our main array. And if you haven't seen that video, click on the link at the top of the screen. Now I know a lot of seasoned people out there are gonna ask why I'm using a metal weather head on PVC. And that is because our supply chain around here is extremely, extremely dry and interrupted. And it is hard to find the parts and pieces that I need to complete the project. And I live way out in the country. There's only a few stores that are about 30 miles away that I can go to to find things like this. And I clean them out usually of all their inventory. Get what you can get while you can get it. All of our panels are run in series. And on this end, we, we will have our red positive conductor. And on that end down there, we've got our black conductor. We're gonna tape the ends of both of these together and run them through the conduit. Make sure though, before you do that, you put on your weatherhead plate or you're gonna be pulling them back through the conduit and untaping them and doing it again. Now you may or may not need a pull wire for this or a pull strap. It depends on how long your run is. Ours is only about 10 feet, so it's not that big of a deal. I can easily push these through the conduit. Once you've got everything close, leave this loose and don't put the head on the weather head yet because what we're gonna need to do is some wire management to get these wires up off the ground and secured properly on the panels. And you can do that with these clips.
Now that everything's nice and neat, we are going to put on our weather head just to make everything as rain tight as possible. On the other end, we will use new MC4 connectors, clip our wires at the proper length. We need them for our system, attach these and connect everything together. And then of course our grounding wire, which is attached to the clips I showed you earlier, is here on our ground rod. We're just gonna attach this and then we are good to go. Well, there you go. That's how we mounted, installed and wired our EG4 Bright Mount rack with four new 455 watt solar ever panels for 1720 watts more for our house. If you already have an array with a rack that you can't add on to anymore, these bright mount racks are great little additions to expand your system. And as always, the links to everything that I use is in the description below the video. Now go check out this playlist right here, which is our entire playlist on all of our solar systems here on our property. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time.